Section 3, Video 5, Virtual Network Switch Standard and Virtual Network Switch Distributed. Virtual Standard Switch enables connectivity between virtual network components and the Virtual Standard Switch can send traffic between virtual machines on the same host which can also be termed as a private network or network traffic to an external network like a public network. An uplink adapter enables connectivity to external networks. The virtual standard switch can be configured with 120 ports, which is the default. However, it can be set up to add more as required. Each port on the virtual standard switch can connect to a network adapter of a virtual machine or an uplink adapter on the physical machine. A virtual switch provides two types of connections. One is a VM kernel which is a dedicated TCP IP stack and includes IP storage such as NFS or iSCSI, vMotion and access to management network. The management port as an example is used to connect vSphere client. The VM kernel port and management have their own IP configuration, address, netmask and gateway. The other type of connection is a VM network port group to allow connectivity especially between virtual machines. Virtual switch features include directing traffic between virtual machines and external networks, load balancing, physical NIC failover, a VM kernel port for IP storage or vMotion, a vSphere management network, and the virtual standard switch is actually a software construct implemented in the VM kernel. This graphic shows two hosts and the key Thing to note here is the virtual port groups are named A, B, C, D, and E, and they're exactly replicated on the other host. This allows a VM to migrate from one host to the other without losing connection. This is an important aspect of how a virtual standard switch is set up on each host, allowing a migration which is seamless as long as the port groups are set up exactly the same on each host. This uh, shows a GUI client screenshot and showing all the networks that are visible to the network adapter on the virtual machine. As this screen shows, we have a VM network, backup, production, storage, and so on. When a VM administrator is configuring the network, it will simply select the drop down list and choose the correct uh, network for that particular vNIC. Moving on to a vSphere distributed switch which is an enhanced and advanced version of the standard switch. We notice that it acts as a single switch across all hosts in a data center. Virtual machines are able to maintain a consistent network configuration. However, the distributed switch is available only with virtual center as it is able to manage multiple hosts and this comes with an enterprise plus license vds allows inbound and outbound traffic shaping and when network resource management is enabled allows dividing the traffic into number of network resource pools including fault tolerant traffic iSCSI, ev motion management traffic nfs and virtual machine traffic in a virtual distributed switch, the network configuration spans across all member hosts. As shown in the graphic, you have two hosts. However, the port groups are distributed across all hosts. As this is deployed as part of the data center, all the hosts that are in that data center in that and managed by the virtual center see the same virtual machine port groups and VM kernel port groups as they are spanned across rather than being on the individual individual ESXi host. This helps in scalability and ensuring a consistent interface as virtual machines migrate from one host to the other without losing connection. One of the essential differences is that the uplink port on uh, that, that the virtual machine connects to is actually the virtual uplink port and not the the host 
uplink. That's the essential difference. Features available for both types of virtual switches, standard and distributed, are the ability to forward layer 2 frames, segment traffic into VLANs, understand 802.1Q VLAN encapsulation, allow more than one uplink, also called NIC teaming, and traffic, sh traffic shaping for outbound traffic. However, the following features are only available with the distributed switch, which include shaping inbound traffic, a central and unified management interface with vCenter server, support for private VLANs, LBT or load-based teaming, network vMotion, increased visibility of intra-virtual machine traffic with NetFlow, improved monitoring, and support for LLDP, which is a vendor-neutral protocol. To summarize, we reviewed standard and distributed switches, common features between virtual and distributed switches, essential differences between standard and distributed virtual switches, and as we learned, the distributed switch is more enhanced and more powerful than the standard switch. However, it is only available with vCenter. In the next video, video 6, we will review network adapters and network switch policies. Thank you for watching.